It's the InfoWars Nightly News. Today's date, June 5th, 2012. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and here's a little look at what we have coming up today. Tonight. Just to be straight about it, but you would sanction a strike before you would tolerate a nuclear Iran. Yes, and I, and I think that we need to begin to prepare people for that. Vice presidential frontrunner Mark Rubio tells the elite CFR that the American people should be prepared for a war with Iran. Then, a terror scare in Minneapolis as the airport is shut down after TSA workers discover a water purification device? Seriously? And five TSA workers are fired and 38 suspended at Southwest Florida International Airport for failing to perform random screening. Plus, the ends justify the means as police illegally round up and handcuff 40 innocent bystanders after a bank robbery in Aurora, Colorado. And finally, a Rossum bombshell from Mike Adams as lab test evidence against healthy family farms are found invalid and allegations unsupportable. All that plus tonight's top headlines up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. First up, it's more calls for warmongering with, from Mark Rubio this time. He's a vice presidential candidate in the wings, possibly, for Mitt Romney, if, uh, if Mitch Daniels doesn't beat him out. Here's an article from Paul Joseph Watson. Rubio, we need to prepare people for war with Iran. He was asked by moderator Richard Stingle, would you sanction a strike before we tolerate a nuclear Iran? And he said, yes, I think we would need to prepare people for that. The Florida senator responded, here's that clip now. You would, just to be straight about it, but you would sanction a strike before you would tolerate a nuclear Iran. Yes, and I, and I think that we need to begin to prepare people for that. He also said we should prepare our allies in the world for the reality that unfortunately if all else fails, preventing a nuclear Iran may tragically require a military solution. And guess who he's going to want to send? He's going to want to send your sons and daughters, your cousins, your brothers, maybe even your fathers out to fight and kill people in Iran. Why? Because they may or may not have nuclear weapons, and it's been proven that they don't have nuclear weapons. But we're going to go in and we got to fight Iran because they're a rogue nation and they're not in with the New World Order. So we must take them down. Remember that, people. We must take them down. Moving on to some other sad news. Poland rises as investigation accuses Russia of plane crash assassination of government. You remember uh, back in April 10th, uh, 2010, it was the plane crash that killed the Polish president and 95 others of his uh, cabinet. And now, about two years ago, much of the senior government was wiped out by, uh, wiped out in a Russian plane crash. The consequences linger today and may prove a defining moment in Poland's history. Now, going back, we have an article from Kurt Nemo, April 12, 2010, talking about uh, you know different people writing about conspiracy theories. In this article, he says, not only did Poland decline to be a victim of the bankster loan sharking operation, Poland's central bank had the audacity to offer the IMF a loan to help other countries overcome the effects of the global crisis, the AFP reported on March 29th, 2010. Poland was the only member of the 27-nation European Union to have experienced growth in 2009, and the IMF forecast that the economy would expand by 2.75% this year and 3.25% in 2011. Well, once you get rid of the entire cabinet and the president, well, then you could come in and send your minions in, most likely from Goldman Sachs or other large banking institutions, to help change the course of that country. So you got a uh, Poland, a proud country with proud people, uh, were the first to be invaded in World War II, and now they've had, you know, two years later, they're, they're finally investigating this crash. Now, we're going to show you um, a video that was cir circulated on the internet many times and people made digital enhancements this is one we found with the digital enhancements and it has uh, you, um, English subtitles so here we go we're gonna roll that and this is eyewitness video just after the plane crashed Yeah. 
Нихуя себе! Нихуя себе! So there, you can look at the video for yourself, and the, with the digital enhancements, you definitely see people running around. You can hear gunshots. Um, they have the translation there. I, you know, I don't know if the translation is 100% correct, but let me tell you, if the Russians are involved in, in killing the entire Polish cabinet or the majority of it, I mean, there has to be some serious repercussions for that. Moving on to more. Military news. U.S. hopes stealth ship will answer a rising China. A super stealthy warship that could underpin the U.S. Navy's China strategy will be able to sneak up the coastline virtually undetected and pound targets with electromagnetic railguns right out of a sci-fi movie. But at more than $3 billion a pop, critics say that the new DDG-1000 destroyer sucks away funds that could be used for better killing operations and killing of more brown people around the world. With the first of the new ships set to be delivered in 2014, the stealth destroyer is being heavily promoted by the Pentagon as one of the most advanced destroyers in history. So there you go. We're going to spend $3 billion a pop on a ship to go kill more people around the world. It makes you wonder, how did we get here? How do we get to this place where war is the constant meme? You know, if we're not at war, we're talking about going to war. And if we're Finishing up a war, we're looking where else where else we could go. Um, we're, we're starting war fronts on on you know coming up on ten countries now. If you count all the little skirmishes that we're involved with, not counting the hundreds of bases across the world, where is it going to end? Well, John Baum made a, a special report here, and it's called the War Machine, and it talks about the propaganda, how it started off back then, you know, trying to get people to sell their businesses, sell their personal businesses to go and join the war effort. It was going to teach people new skills, but what was it really doing? It was really ensnaring people into this giant web of killing other people across the world. So let's roll with that right now. The war machine. A gold mine for the elite. A duty for the average citizen. Well-executed war propaganda is key to the overall psyop to push the world into war. The fog of fervent nationalism causes a man to give up his family business and join the effort with little questioning. I've got a nice little store filled up. What shall I do with it? Well, maybe you can sell it. As their establishments are transferred to folk without critical skills, many small businessmen discover they can... The war machine feeds on the success of the individual. Suddenly, opportunity springs up for a black man in a segregated society. Do you want to learn one of these jobs, Hubert? Well, then that's the one for me. In government schools all over the country, such workers train for jobs of vital importance. Day and night classes are conducted. To these free schools also come men who have lost their jobs as a result... Disguised as opportunity, the war machine integrates the individual into its system. Call upon women. At first, women go into service jobs releasing men for the army and for war industries. Out of 50 million women at the beginning of the war, 10 million were working. In war towns all over the United States, women are called upon to leave their homes and take jobs. Among our young unmarried women... What and better way to process eugenics than to incorporate the females into the war machine? Factory work is usually no more difficult than housework. And our enemy is blanketed with hate speech. You'll see ruins. You'll see flowers. You'll see some mighty pretty scenery. Don't let it fool you. You are in enemy country. Be alert. Suspicious of everyone. Take no chances. You are up against something more than tourist scenery. You are up against German history. It isn't good. Of course, we were defending our liberties in World War II. But the war machine's targeting of individual liberties quickened into the monstrosity we are experiencing today. Our indifference is multiplied. As we become indoctrinated into a culture of death, the nationalism is removed. A globalist mind frame has been injected. Now the enemy is humanity itself. Uh, what do you think 
is, is a viable figure that, that Gaia, that the planet, can sustain. I would guess, living the way we do, uh, not more than one billion, probably less. The drone uh, program that the CIA runs is a huge supportive element of U.S. national uh, power. I think it's great. I think we ought to be using technology to make uh, law enforcement uh, more uh, productive, cuts down on manpower in the air, and also uh, more, uh, more safe. That's why we use it uh, on the battlefield. The technological advantages of uh, transgenic crops are contained in the seed. Getting those technologies to the poorest farmers is absolutely one of the keys to making the breakthrough out of extreme poverty. A soft war on individuality, statehood, country has been raging quietly for years, masked by the unyielding propaganda of the war machine. John Bound, InfoWars Nightly News. So you can see the propaganda has gotten a lot more sophisticated now than it was back in the day. They're a little more blatant and uh, in your face, but, but nice. It's the government coming to help you. and Now it's just talking to you like you're a stupid slave, a stupid sheep just sleeping. Yes, GMOs are good. War is good. It's all good. You just keep following the plan. Now we're going to go to a couple articles here from Natural News. Uh, Mike Adams was here doing the show yesterday, and when he left, I said, hey, I, I read this article. It's called Ross and Bombshell Lab Test Evidence Against Sharon Palmer Found Invalid. And Mike goes, yeah, there's a whole bunch to this story. You're not going to believe it. And I said, well, tell me. And he went on this long tale, and I'm going to try to bring it up to you in a, a nutshell. Apparently, uh, there's the allegation that Sharon Palmer's chickens contain toxic levels of arsenic. And this was brought out um, a website called unhealthyfamilyfarms.org. And they're based on these tests that they did from some chickens. Well, when Adams looked at the tests, there's the website there, Unhealthy Family Farms, and it's run by a man named Ogenis van der Planets. Mike did some more investigation. And here in this article, it's nine pages long, there's a section, bombshell findings of our investigation about the lab tests claiming to show Sharon Palmer's chickens had high levels of contaminants. Finding one, Ogenis van der Planets never tested Sharon Palmer's tickets chickens. Instead, he relied on tests that were undertaken by a woman named Tamara Hansen. Tamara Hansen is not a doctor. Doctors Data Inc., the lab we were told conducted these lab tests, told me on the record during an investigative interview that we only conduct tests for doctors or physicians. They do not allow members of the general public to even order tests. This brings up the question of how Tamara Hansen, who was able to order a test on raw chicken without the intervention of a doctor or a physician. Finding three, the doctor's data lab test publicized by Ogenis van der Planets and Larry Ottning, who's, he's another person in this whole web of scheming, do not state anywhere on the test that the chickens came from Healthy Family Farms or Sharon Palmer. The origin of the chicken that was tested is a complete mystery. The test only says raw chicken, which could mean any raw chicken sourced from anywhere. There is no reliable evidence leaking the published test to Healthy Family Farms. So what does this mean? Well, basically... Um, Ogenis van der Planets has been a source of information to the Ventura County um, authorities. And he's been telling them that Sharon's running a bad farm, he's got test results, and he's going up there with his PhD credentials telling them this, saying, I'm a PhD in nutrition, um, I got it from this esteemed Richmond's University, and there, there's his diploma there. And we'll get more into that. So they've been rating year after year Sharon Palmer based on these fake tests or tests that can't be proven that they actually, that the test uh, came from her chickens. So they're raiding her farm. Uh, she's not able to then repay her investors. So now the authorities are coming after her on the fact that she lied to investors and that she's defrauding them. And so that whole case is based on her ability not to pay them back because she's being attacked by two people, Ogenis van der Planets, and then Larry Ottning, who actually owns the title to the land where her farm is. Are you, are you catching on with this? It's getting a little weird. So, so that was the first uh, article that came out yesterday. It's really long, but you should take some time. There's a statement in there from Sharon Palmer about how she's been attacked for the last five years by these two individuals, and she doesn't understand why it's happening. Now, there was a mediation agreement, and Larry Ottening actually uh, was told to take down the Unhealthy Family Farms 
um, website as a result of that. But what did he do? He just changed the name. He actually transferred the title of the website over to Audrey and his Fander Planets because you can see there, there's the GoDaddy.com who is registration and you can see it's registered to Audrey and his Fander Planets. Um, unhealthyfamilyfarms.com. I think I said .org earlier, but it's unhealthyfamilyfarm.com. Now today, after more investigation, uh, and Mike Adams, who's coming up really soon, he can conclude that um, Audrinus Vanderplan is PhD, key informant in prosecution of Sharon Palmer and James Stewart. James Stewart's the uh, owner of Ross and Foods, was found to have fake credentials. And so he started looking into this. He actually talked to Mr. Vanderplanets over the phone. And he said he's got a degree from Richmond University. Mike called Richmond University and asked him. He said, no. And they said, no such information exists. Well, it turns out it's Rich Munns University, and we've got that graphic. We're going to show you that right now. There's his. And they got some uh, a tip from another source of a guy named, uh, go back to that. It, it's going to run into that graphic. A guy named Roy Williams. He also has, Roy David Williams has the same uh, degree from the same university. Now we're going to put them side by side, and you can see that they have the same crest, they have the same font, basically the same formatting. And here's a little bit from Richmond's university. Let's go to that graphic. Uh, the enclosed diploma was designed to be virtually indistinguishable from most diplomas of major universities. Your sample diploma has been printed exactly as you instructed. <laughs> Please inspect your diploma carefully. If there are any errors, email us immediately. Uh, and then it goes on to, you know, they'll provide letters of recommendation, verification. They have a website. Uh, they have a fax number where you could get transcripts and letters of recommendation from uh, professors. So all this is done basically by you call them up. They go over some background. Oh, you know, I've studied this. I've studied nutrition for this many years. All right, you qualify for the doctor. Just pay us, you know, $2,000 or so. And, and we'll provide you all these sources and all this background information so you could go out and get a job under this fake PhD claim. So basically, we have Audrinus Vanderplanets, and I haven't even got to the good stuff yet, going around as a PhD with his, his degree from Richmond's University, which is basically a pay degree. You pay for it and you get it. Uh, but now it gets really weird. Now I'm going to show you a little video of Audrinus Vanderplanets from 2010, I believe, and this was, he was featured on a show called Ripley's Believe It or Not, and he actually is a eater and a, um, a spewer of information about eating rancid food. So here's that video clip. What would you do if you went to the fridge for a snack and saw this? If you're Ogenus Vonderplanitz, you grab a fork and dig right in. Believe it or not, he's been eating the foulest food he can find for the last three decades. In fact, the meat he eats every day is intentionally rotted for over a year. So why does all this matter? Well, you have this guy running around claiming to be a PhD, informing authorities that he's got test results against chickens, going after a lady who's trying to be um, a family farm owner and sell her goats and chickens and milk to Rawson Foods. That's why he got busted, because he was selling her stuff. Well. This is from the article written by Mike Adams. But perhaps the most disturbing realization in all this is that Ogenus' illegitimate academic credential, credentials will no doubt be cited by states across the country which seek to criminalize nutritional consultation services and require state licensing for all nutritionists. This has already been attempted in North Carolina where nutrition blogger Steve Cooksey was threatened by the state with jail time for urging people to eat specific foods for diabetes. So that's just one of the the smoking guns. Plus, you have this whole vetting of your sources. And it seems like our government and people in the government do not, are not able to vet their sources very well. We've got FBI informants out there getting people caught up in stings. Nobody's ever vetting these people. The press barely does it. Uh, and then you've got these guys who seem to be, they have something in for the raw milk industry or just healthy eating in general. And they're not interested in that, or at least that seems to be the, uh, the antithesis here, looking at all this information. This two real long articles. The first one is entitled, Ross and Bombshell, Lab Test Evidence Against Sharon Palmer Found Invalid Allegations Unsupportable. And the second one, Audrinus Vanderplanet's PhD, Key Informant and Prosecution of Sharon Palmer 
and James Stewart found to have fake academic credentials. And uh, let, let's just go, what happens when you go to richmondsuniversity.net, the website that they had on their little form for their diplomas? Oh, look where it goes. It goes to one of those places that it just kind of customizes your search into some weird form. And with more on this completely weird case of the rotten food eater who's gotten himself involved in the raw milk industry, I turn now to natural news editor, contributor, and host of sometimes the Alex Jones Show. It's Mike Adams. How's it going, Mike? Hey, Rob. I'm doing great. Good to be with you tonight, man. All right, so uh, why don't you bring, bring everybody up to date. What happened at Rossum Foods? They had a raid. How is Sharon Palmer involved? And then, you know, bring us up to date with, with, with your two articles that you wrote the last couple days. Sure, you bet. Uh, Rossum Foods was founded by James Stewart, and we know he, he was thrown in jail and then a lot of bad things happened to him. Well, he was selling chicken and eggs from a farm called Healthy Family Farms run by a woman named Sharon Palmer. She was also raided twice by Ventura County, arrested, charged with selling unpasteurized goat cheese and goat milk and things like that. But then later on, uh, in 2010, she was attacked by two individuals, uh, Agenis von der Planets, the one you referred to there, and another man named Larry Otting, who's actually the title owner of the land on which her farm operates. Now these two individuals put out some test results that they said showed Sharon's chickens to be contaminated with arsenic and her eggs contaminated with mercury and so on. Well, we did an investigation on this because this destroyed her business. This actually put her out of business and made it so she couldn't repay investors, which then caused Ventura County to charge her with multiple felony financial crimes of being unable to repay investors. So this is all intertwined. Anyway, we did an investigation, Rob, and we found out that the so-called test data that's supposed to link Sharon's chickens to mercury and arsenic is completely invalid. It doesn't even mention that it's tested on her chickens. Uh, there's no chain of custody. The, the, the person who gathered the sample has no lab training. It's, it's completely inadmissible. It'd be thrown out of court in a minute. But then we did some more research and we found out that Agenis von der Planets, PhD, who is uh, sort of the founder of what's called a primal diet, which advocates eating rotten meat and molded animal organs and, um, you know, raw rotten bone marrow and things like that. The that's stuff that, that mom used to make, right? <laughs> no, the stuff that mom used to throw out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when it sat in the, in the freezer for long enough or whatever. But anyway, I mean, I mean I'm not knocking, this is not a, se a segment about their diet. Obviously, right. that would gross me out, but some people, you know, swear by it, whatever. That's their deal. They call it high meat. I mean, whatever. I don't get that. But the thing is, his academic credentials turned out to be falsified. He doesn't have a PhD, not a real one anyway. It was acquired from an online diploma mill that was used by other people, a fake nuclear engineer, for example, who was prosecuted by the Department of Justice. We found another guy who blew the whistle. He sent us all the documents showing the fake transcripts that you get when you buy these diplomas online. You get your fake PhD, your fake transcripts. You even get fake letters of recommendation from professors and from the school talking about what a great person you are. And you get a fake a verification number that you can give to your employer to fax them and, and try to verify your academic history. And we're so showing those on screen right now. We have Agenis Vanderplatz, back that up a little bit, and uh, I think it's Roy Williams, or Roy yeah, David Williams. Roy yeah, David we got Williams. them both side by side. They have the same crest, same Richmond's University instead of Richmond University. Uh, and then uh, there's a sheet that comes from Richmond's that tells you, you know, this is all the stuff we give you. Here's the diploma. Here's the transcripts. Here's the recommendation letters. If you call in, use your student ID number. Right. Really weird stuff that's going oh. on. Well, and we did, we did a lot of additional research. But let me tell you why this matters. Why is this relevant? I called Chris Harmon, the Ventura County prosecutor handling this case. I called him on the phone yesterday, and I confirmed with him on the phone that, yes, he met with Agenis von der Planets that Agenis and Larry Odding have met multiple times with Ventura County DA and LA County officials and gave them information that was then followed by the prosecution of Sharon Palmer and James Stewart. So that's why I, I'm, I call them informants. So now this informant has been academically discredited and it goes back to the prosecutors to ask, are they conducting due diligence? Where are they getting their information from? Why are they charging Sharon Palmer with these raw milk crimes when the very people that they're getting information from are themselves discredited? That's the bigger question here. And that, that's, that's why we've covered this issue. Well, I think it's a big issue because it goes back, this could be 
this could go to so many different levels. You've got a guy that can then be discredited as a nutritionist, which can then be used to attack nutritionists all over the country, which we're seeing. Right. It could also be used to, um, you know, the vetting of informants. The vetting, that's a big, that's a big deal. You're getting informants that are that are accusing people of terrorism all over the place. They're helping the terrorists, you know, bomb bridges in Ohio. And we're not really looking into these informants. We're just trusting that the people working with these informants have done their due diligence. And in this case, it doesn't appear that they've done that. Let me tell you what I think has really gone down here. The inside story. And uh, I, I do have some evidence of this, but not enough yet to prove it. So this part of this is conjecture. But I believe the FDA contacted Ventura and LA counties gave them money and said, go after Sharon Palmer and James Stewart, do anything you have to to prosecute these people and throw them in jail. With that motivation behind them, the political motivation, I believe that these district attorney's offices then gathered evidence from anybody and everybody. They didn't care where it came from, what their credibility was, whether it made any sense at all. They just grasped at, at straws to, to try to find some reason to prosecute Sharon Palmer and throw her in prison. Now, the question remains right now, what will happen now that this information has gone public? Will Sharon Palmer and James Stewart be uh, vindicated? Will charges be dropped against them? Because now a defense attorney, a competent defense attorney, could tear this case apart in a court of law. And, and there's more information coming out on this. And this is breaking, Rob. We have already received evidence that we believe will show that Los Angeles County investigators and prosecutors have committed felony crimes and knowingly conspired to take away James Stewart's rights and falsely accuse him of crimes that he did not commit. That information is going to come out very soon on Natural News and, and hopefully, of course, Infowars.com once we can get it all documented. This is amazing. This, this can turn to be a huge case. One, a big victory for the raw milk industry and for people who want food freedom. And hopefully we can use this to go after these types of individuals and government organizations who are just trying to go after people politically with no real motivation. They're not really out there concerned about the best interests of people. They're more no. concerned with just stopping this you know, raw milk thing that they don't like. Well, that's the other angle here, Rob. This is the fascinating angle. Think about how many millions of dollars have been spent going after Sharon Palmer and James Stewart. Meanwhile, if you go to the grocery store, there's cancer-causing chemicals in the hot dogs, in the bacon, in the diet soda, there's fluoride in the water, there's armed gangs running loose throughout the counties. They're just murdering people on the streets. So why do they think that a woman raising goats is a threat to public health, so much so that they got to spend millions of dollars going after her and uh, allying themselves with people who've been exposed as having faked their academic credentials. I mean, seriously, is this what Ventura County and LA County prosecutors have come to? Just their own basically criminal gang. This is out of control. Uh, and when you talked to the prosecutor, did he um, make any, did, did you get the feeling that he, he knew he was in the wrong at this point or is he still gonna go forward with this case? No, he, he said to me that, uh, it, based on his investigation, he said, Sharon Palmer lied to investors, and that's a crime. And I replied to him and said, but wait a minute. If her revenues hadn't been destroyed by these attacks based on uh, completely inadmissible lab tests, she would have been able to repay investors. Thus, there would be no crime. I said, if she had been able to repay investors, there wouldn't be a prosecution, would there? And he told me on the record, I don't know. I can't say. Those were his exact words. <laughs> they never want to admit they're wrong. That's one thing I know. Anytime <laughs> you get a government guy by, in, into a corner, they will do anything they can not to admit they're wrongdoing. That much. I've seen it. I've read it. I've been a part of it. And, uh, you, you know, you'll never get these guys to admit they're wrong. They may come up with some reason to drop the charges on some technicality where they still look good and save face. Right. This, this is totally um, ridiculous. I did have one more follow-up question. How does Larry Odding, uh, he's the landowner that Sharon Palmer was using, and he also had a website called Unhealthy Family Farms, which we have a graphic of somewhere that he then transferred to Ogenus Vander Planets. Yeah. And, and so tell us a little bit about that. Larry Odding uh, is the guy who got the loan and had the, the farm land put in his name. So he's the title owner of the land, and he had good credit so he could get the loan. Uh, he then, in, in 2010, he then posted this website, Unhealthy Family Farm, that posted these lab tests that then disparaged Sharon Palmer and accused her of having arsenic in her chickens and so on. Well, 
this, there was a lawsuit over this and it went to mediation. In the mediation, Larry Odding agreed, and we have it in writing, and this has been posted, he agreed to take down the website and to stop interfering with Sharon's investors. So that the website came down, but only briefly. Within a couple of weeks, it had gone right back up, and now it was transferred into the name of none other than Ajanas Vonderplan. It's the guy with the phony diploma PhD. PhD, nutritionist is what they call him. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a doctor in nutrition, really, if you can believe that. So uh, that, that's the story behind that. But hey, Rob, I got something else for you, for you. Have you seen this? Time Magazine has a new cover, How to Die. Oh, it's all in communist red, too. How fitting. Oh, yeah, commie red, man. How to Die. This is like eugenics in your wow. face. Wow. I was at the grocery store. I saw this. I had to pick it up. It, it's, not even, it's not even caged in anything now. It's just you read this, die. How to <laughs> Die. How to Die, yeah. you stupid slave scum. Yeah, My exactly. My goodness. It, it, and it should, it should have, if it were actually an instruction manual on how to die, it should say, uh, take more vaccines, drink more fluoride, drink more aspartame, you know, follow everything that the mainstream media tells you to Watch do. Watch more and, TV. Yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> and, and take the drugs that your doctor prescribes to you. You'll be dead in no time. So, so Time Magazine, How to Die. The, the special Kevorkian issue wow. of Time Magazine. There you go. They're definitely, they've definitely won up the case to kill Granny. That is just out of control. Well, well Mike, you got more articles coming out on this. Um, maybe an update on Friday or something about this, because this looks like this is, a, this is a case that, you know, you said to me this morning, you said not a lot of people take an interest in this. Well, you better take interest in your food, because that's where this is going. They're going to use this to come after your food, come after the food that you want to eat, the healthy food, that we all know is healthy, and maybe other people don't, but still, you got to give people their right to choose what they want to put in their bodies on all levels, as far as I'm concerned. You bet, man. Hey, thanks for having me on, Rob. Good to join you on InfoWars Nightly News. All right, we appreciate that, Mike. All right, that was Mike Adams from Natural News. He's become the WikiLeaks of the raw milk industry. And uh, we're going to be right back after this break with some TSA news, some hardcore TSA news that I can't even believe. And we're also going to put out a tribute there to one Bob Chapman, who's a longtime contributor to Infowars.com, coming on the show. Well, he passed away on June 4th. The rumors that we heard are unfortunately true. Bob Chapman is no longer with us, and we'll be right back, and we're going to have a, a little memorial service for him and show, show you one of his interviews from earlier um, in April. We'll be right back. It's Infowars Nightly News. <laughs> Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it, and I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and sell your data to the new world order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't 
doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. And I just want to encourage you out there, if you have not started a profile on planetinfowars.com, we have a new social networking website that is in the beta form. And if you want to get in on the ground floor, create some groups, link up with people. Uh, we got dating, business, health, guns, outdoors, street art, resistance, activism, preparedness, anything you could think of, we've got something there for you. So come on, join us. It's free. Um, a great activism tool, a great way to meet up people. And now let's get on to the news. We got a lot of TSA news here. Five TSA workers fired, 38 suspended at Southwest Florida International Airport. And this is out of the newspress.com. Five transportation workers of the Security Administration at Southwest Florida International Airport have been fired and 38 suspended after an internal investigation found they failed to perform random screenings last year. Wow, the 43, a combination of frontline screeners and supervisors, represents about 15% are of the 280 TSA agents employed at the airport. The number of workers involved makes it one of the largest disciplinary actions TSA has taken in its 10-year history, said spokesman David Castlevetter. Let me tell you something. I think it's good that they weren't performing random searches because they obviously realized it was a violation of the Fourth Amendment and their conscience couldn't take it anymore. So, not that I want to tell people to do something that would get them fired or suspended, but this is a violation of our rights. So, you know, you need to do what you do best, and if that means go find a job elsewhere, find a, some honorable line of work where you're not groping people and digging through their personal objects and treating them like prisoners, then, then go do it. So, um, you know, I think these five TSA workers who've been fired and the 38 suspended, well, in a way, they are, I don't know, almost heroes at this point. Here's another one, Kurt Nemo. Water purification device prompts TSA to close down Minneapolis airport. And it's another incident of comical overreaction. The TSA ordered the evacuation of two airport terminals in Minneapolis after a water purification device was found in a woman's luggage. My God, the woman in question said she needed the device for medical purposes. After TSA discovered the luggage, the woman was pulled off the flight and interrogated. Uh, the flight to Anchorage, Alaska was delayed while the TSA puzzled over the device, wondering if it was <laughs> sent to an American by Al-Qaeda who hates us for our freedom to be crash groped and sent through dangerous radiation naked body porno scanners. No criminal charges were filed. So there you go. And not to be outdone, TSA and obscene grope down of senior citizens. TSA agents have once again been accused of conducting strip search of an elderly traveler after airport screeners carried out an obscene pat-down on a 73-year-old grandmother, during which they touched her breasts. Totally disgusting. Putting their hands on her breasts, under her bra, between her thighs, in her thighs. I mean, this is a senior citizen's for God's sake. I understand some security issues, but bordering on the obscene, said her son, Eli Anselmini. In fact, we have a quick video clip of that, and we'll be right back after this video clip. Right here in the middle of the security area, they're lifting her shirt up. You know, my mom is, you know, 73-year-old lady, overweight, um, totally unnecessary. Between her thighs, in her thighs, I mean, this is a senior citizen, for God's sake, you know. I understand some security issues, but this is just bordering on obscene. They don't care. I mean, they violate people's civil rights left and right all the time. Yeah, they singled her out because they saw some weakness in her, and they needed to exploit that and show her she was just a scum slave like the rest of us here. And I'm going to be flying here at the end of the week. And let me tell you something. They're not touching my kids, but we'll see. Ends justify the means. Here's our next story. As cops illegally handcuff 40 innocent bystanders. Bystanders. Police detained and handcuffed 40 innocent bystanders after a brink robbery in Aurora, Colorado on June 4th. Nearly two dozen cars were stopped near a Wells Fargo bank and occupants held without probable cause as police searched for a suspect. 
Oh, and who is the, the propagator of all this? Police Chief Daniel Oates demonstrated his ignorance of the Fourth Amendment when he told CBS Denver, the ends justify the means, after the illegal roundup snared a suspect. He described mass detainment as handcuffing as lawful and necessary. Oates then apologized to the innocent bystanders who were terrorized. Can you imagine that? You're just trying to make your way, go along with your life, and suddenly you're being thrown to the ground and arrested and saying, hey, you might be a uh, suspect in a bank robbery. We don't really know. We're just going to get everybody in here. It's that type of dragnet that is what our founding fathers and those who have died in all those wars before this one have fought over. And uh, it's not going to end until people start standing up. Let's go on to our quote of the day. And this is from the one and only Albert Einstein. Unthinking respect for authority is the greatest enemy of truth. Greater words have not been said, Albert. Thank you very much. And now I have some sad news to report. Uh, yesterday, June 4th, 2012, the one and only Bob Chapman passed from this earth. And uh, he was a great contributor here at InfoWars. I loved hearing him on Friday. We had a name for him. We called him Bobo Chapman. One of, uh, you know, a nice little nickname for him. And we loved his rants. We actually did Bob Chapman impersonations around here. And because he had great information, he was a great personality, he did it with care and with kindness and really with love for his fellow man. He didn't have to do that. He retired in the 90s and he got bored. So he came back out and started writing the International Forecaster. Here's his uh, obituary from the Ott Laughlin Funeral Home. Robert Bob Chapman, age 76, of Winter Haven, Florida, formerly of Mexico, died Monday, June 4, 2012, due to pancreatic cancer. He was born October 16, 1935, in Boston, Massachusetts, the son of John Chapman and Ruth Donnelly Chapman. Bob was a veteran of the U.S. Army and a writer of newsletters discussing finances, economics, and regular radio commentator discussing politics as well as economics and finances. Most of his working life served as a stockbroker. Bob is survived by his wife of 47 years, Judith Dabrowski Chapman, son Robert Michael Chapman, daughter Jennifer Galati, and her husband Matt, sisters Dorothy Trecker and Joan Lotz, and four grandchildren. Committal services are Wednesday, June 6 at 1 p.m. at Glen Abbey Memorial Gardens, Auburndale, Florida. Condolences may be sent to the family at ottlaughlinfuneralhome.com. Below here, there's a guest book. And uh, you can go back to that shot. There's a guest book where people were sending out, you know, here's one from the UK. True Patriot will be missed by all. Rest in peace, Bob. Much love for you, Judy, and the family. And that's the kind of person Bob Chapman was. He was a real American who cared for this country. He helped get the book, None Dare Call It Conspiracy, which is one of the books that woke me up, frankly, to the left-right paradigm and this whole global government scheme. He helped get that started. I mean, he was a real patriot. We're going to have... Memorial's ongoing for him. We're gonna, about to play one of his uh, interviews he did with Alex on April 18th of this year, and we're going to find some other great um, interviews. If you have any that you'd like to suggest, you can send me an interview uh, email at robd at infowars.com. And with that, we're going to go to the February or April 18th interview, 2012, with Bob Chapman and Alex Jones. And we'll be right, and actually that'll be the end of the show, and we'll be back the next day with Darren McBreen, who will be hosting. It's InfoWars Nightly News, and we'll see you then. Bob, what do you make of the statements I've made? What's the latest uh, there at the International Forecaster in your research? Uh, what's happening? What's the latest manipulations? What do you make of Corzine, the announcement that he did lie, he did steal the money, and he's not going to get in trouble? Well, that's uh, a real hatful, uh, because um, he should be fined, at least. Uh, and a very, very, very large fine. But I think that's what will happen in the end. And as I said, when the uh, story uh, broke, I explained why. I said, everybody's going to get their money back. Right now, they've got about 68 to 70% back. And in time, they'll work it out. That's, at least that's my take on it. In reference to what you were talking about, uh, have you discussed the uh, new uh, House bill? Uh, 1318, I think it is, uh, which has been passed in the Senate and is now in the House and Committee. And I think it's a transportation bill. And part of that bill is to uh, confiscate 
or canceled passports of people who try to leave the country who owe the government money. Are you familiar with that? I am a little bit, Bob. Tell me more. Well, it's really as simple as that. Of course, you could step aside and say, well, if that's what you want to do, clear everybody to make sure they don't own the IRS money before they try to take a trip. But they're not going to do that. They're going to terrorize people at the airport. And I think that's what they're up to. Now, this bill, <clears throat> and this, I'll call it an amendment to that bill, uh, I think that uh, they're going to have real problems passing that. And it could be struck down, but it just shows you the length of what these people will do. Sure, I'm familiar with the bill uh, uh, that's passed the Senate and they think is going to pass the House. Uh, to create debtors' prisons, basically, and not let you leave the country. And Homeland Security has said they're going to not let you have a job if you owe taxes next. Now, no judge, no jury. You can't revoke someone's um, citizenship. They have to renounce it. That's part of law, part of the Constitution. And the lawyers concurred with my analysis, because I've seen them in the news since, saying, yes, this is basically revoking citizenship by stealth to say we're canceling uh, your passport. I mean, that is only Stalin did stuff like that. I mean, th th this is, and people are like, well, they're now doing it for people that hadn't paid their child support. That's what I mean. It's, it, it, it's totally illegal. But, but so is having federal spies on the streets randomly spying on people with pre-crime, Bob. That's true. Why do you think it's moving so fast and they're so out in the open? And they've ever got definitely have a lot of stuff lined up that they want to put in position. I mean, uh, two weeks before last, we had uh, a woman who runs the commodities uh, for uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and Blythe Masters on CNBC. Now, in that capacity, she nor anybody else had ever been on J.P.M on behalf of JPM and CNBC. And everything was pre-staged. And she was making excuses why they were following the law because people were saying that the markets were rigged and were manipulated. And we, were, we wouldn't do that sort of thing. We're not that kind of company. We're just working for our clients. So there's something in that area coming down the road. I don't know what it is yet. I would suspect perhaps the uh, CFTC might be going to make some limitations and uh, actually police them uh, for uh, the purchase of different kinds of futures, and in particular in this case, uh, they've been manipulating the market for a long time, but now it's in a big way. And maybe one, maybe they want to get the onus off their back, for all I know. But something's going on. Well, it certainly is. And they're trying to accelerate basically a soft martial law to get everybody ready for it. Um, so what I hear from you is it looks like things are deteriorating a lot faster. Is that what you're saying, Bob? It is. And it was in relation to your comment that that is. And uh, yes, it is. Expedition of the plans that they have put in place and haven't had in place for many, many years. Well, I think overall, uh, you're looking at a situation in Europe that is insolvable, and they don't know what to do now. If you notice, for a month or so, you've not heard much from the Illuminus, uh, the bureaucrats, the politicians, and now there's a fight going on between the Europeans and the U.S. members. And the Europeans are saying, look, you got to help us with this thing. We already put a lot of money to it, into it. Uh, we want you to put in, along with um, Japan and China and other uh, third world countries that haven't put anything in, uh, we want you to put a, a, a lot more money in. And they're saying, why should we do that? We didn't create the problem, you did. And that's what's going on 
and it can lead to no good end because they're not cooperating with each other. It's been going on for what I think is a substantial amount of time. And so I think you're going to have some blow-ups here. We had three more suicides in Greece yesterday. People have just given up. Um, I don't know what the election is going to accomplish on May 6th. The, they cannot be a majority. And even if uh, the two major parties got together, they still only get 40% of the vote at the outside. So there may be two or three elections until finally something happens. Uh, there's a major uh, investigation going on uh, with a former member of the government who stole millions and millions of dollars. And... <clears throat> And, uh, and and this was a program where, in the process of purchasing silent submarines, the money was through, weaved through a group of offshore corporations. So you know that this person is guilty because why would he do such a thing? Are you talking about Greece right now? Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh let me raise this point to you. Uh, this is out of the Washington Post saying what you just said. Amid Euro slump, the IMF rethinks austerity. And you had said eight, nine months ago, whenever that Dominique Strauss-Kahn thing happened, that it was a setup, that it was run by Sarkozy, that later came out, and that Kahn didn't want to squeeze as hard, not because he's a nice guy, but he's saying we're gonna kill the golden goose. You can't impoverish them this fast. And so they basically removed him because he was set to also be able to beat Sarkozy coming up in the election. Now the person that you're friends with, uh, Le Pen's doing good. But the, the point here is that the bankers are realizing that they are killing the golden goose. And, and th they're now admitting this. And they have no solution for the debt. Now they get Spain on their hands. Um, you're talking a, min a minimum of $1.5 trillion. And it could be as high as two, two and a half trillion. If you put them all together, you get six trillion. And there's no way they can come up with it without destroying uh, their financial base. And so we, we continue to take this avoidance of responsibility as to what they're going to or trying to do. And so all of that uh, is in the pot, so to speak. And there are no solutions. So... This is one of the reasons why gold and silver are being held down, because they would want them going up two or 300 points in the face of this terrible predicament that uh, exists in Europe, which could very well lead to the demise over the next couple of years of the uh, Eurozone. That unraveling, what do you expect gold to do when that unraveling accelerates? Because I know it always takes longer, but you're saying one or two years. A lot of experts are saying six months or so. There's no telling. But I, I think this year it would be safe to say that uh, gold could test 2,000, 2,200. Bob, what else is on your radar screen right now? Well, I think that last, uh, last item is very important. I hope that the listening audience pursues that bill in the House, um, House uh, Bill 1813, I think it is. And, um, you know, each time they go to try to pass one of these things, if we can stop them, I know it's a small victory, but it's a very important one. Um, you brushed upon earlier uh, what's going to happen with Corazine, and uh, I think... It, that's going to fall into the background because I, I believe that what they'll do is fine them, yeah, but it won't be a tough fine. Um, and maybe even the company that's bankrupt will pay it. Um, but there's a lot more of these coming down the line. And uh, we got uh, suits against Shady Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Uh, we have um, people getting caught. And in the commodity business, uh, uh, taking positions and putting them on hold by putting them in another uh, company account. There's all sorts of 
terrible things going on in that industry. And I think a lot more of them are going to come to surface, and they're in the process of doing so now. Yeah, that's what it telegraphs to me. Their reluctance to prosecute him is because they know they're all in the same position, and so they're setting the precedent to not pay people and to take folks' money. And that's what Max Kaiser says. That's what other guests we've had on uh, confer. I mean, I know you don't have to give us time frames on the meltdown, but it's pretty bad now. Uh, what, what signs should we look for? Well, <clears throat> I think the bond market is the first place to look. And um, they have just... Um, uh, been unsuccessful at taking the 10-year U.S. note down to a yield of 2.5%. Uh, uh, I should say the um, uh, the outside market, the long bonds in that category. And um, I think what they're going to start doing again is a continuation of Operation Twist, which is aiding markets in one place and selling markets in another place. And it's coming to light, too, that they're taking direct orders from J.P. Morgan Chase and Goldman Sachs. And I, I see that uh, alluded to in much of the press throughout the world. Uh, and that's something really new. You know, like, they're the bad guys, and they're not really taking orders. Um, uh, they're taking orders from Wall Street. Well said. Let's go to your phone calls. Uh, Nicole in Michigan, you're on the air. Hi, Alex. Thanks so much for taking my call. Thanks for calling. Um, I actually had a question about uh, vaccines, but my husband is here with me, and he wanted to share an experience he had in the military with a vaccine. Sure. Hey, Jones, my name is John. Sure. Go ahead. Hey, uh, I was medically discharged from the Air Force pending a quote-unquote flu shot. Within an hour of having this thing, I was uh, with an anaphylactic, uh, what do you call that? Anaphylactic shock. anaphylactic shock. And it lasted for over a, over a couple of years. Yeah, you know, a lot of times they tell you they're shooting you up with one thing and it's really another. You might have been shot up with a small amount of nerve gas, uh, biological, you really have no idea. They use you uh, in late stage testing of weapon systems, you name it. Uh, you can look up Project Shad and other programs that have gone on right up into the 90s. That's the latest stuff we've seen declassified. Uh, and they actually kill U.S. troops uh, routinely. Uh, U.S. troops are seen as expendable, basically like rhesus monkeys or rats. And uh, I had one of Governor Perry's employees who I've seen on television, it was one of his spokesmen, come to my in-game event. Uh, when I was showing the Endgame film, and he said, no, it's, it's, I was at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio. I was a medic a decade ago. This is a decade from then. And he said that we were told to shoot him up with a flu shot, and they all died. And then we were told to scrub the whole thing out. Uh, so that's the type of stuff they do. Uh, I, I mean, was it a special shot, or did they line everybody up and uh, give them the shots? Oh, well, check this out. Um, we have routine flu shots on a yearly basis. And around that time, they were having the um, anthrax shot. And I told him, I said, I wasn't going to get it. And I told my chief, I said, I'm not taking this anthrax shot. And he said, you're going to be uh, uh, court-martialed and probably dishonorable discharge. I said, well, I'd rather have that than die. So they just lied and said, here's the flu shot, and it was probably the anthrax. Because the anthrax did kill a bunch of people, and they had mutinies finally, as you know. It was in the newspapers, and the doctors said they wouldn't do it, so it stopped. Because it was causing anaphylactic shock, heart attacks, death, autoimmune disorders. Uh, what year was this that this happened to you? Uh, it's, it was, what was it? Uh, it was around the year 2003. 2002, 2003. Time. No, it was 2000. One or 2002, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was 2002, late 01, 02, when the government did the anthrax attacks, and it now admitted it was super U.S. grade, was mailed from Fort Detrick and all the rest of it, and they you know, had a couple of patsies that they tried to set up, and they finally killed one of them to, to, to make it stick. Uh, but, yeah, that, that was the first time they did it, and then, and, and then they had to suspend it 
uh, because the maker, you know, admittedly uh, had so many problems at their plant. It was so, so it was killing so many people, but it wasn't a problem. They're just seeing if they can do this to you. Bob, uh, um, you're a veteran yourself. I know you've studied all this. What do you what do you think about what the globalists do to people? The little gift they give everybody that keeps giving. Well, it was uh, like as I look back, I was lucky. Uh, I wasn't taken into some of those programs. Uh, they were mostly biological at that time. Um, they had other kind of kinds of programs, but uh, you know, you never would think for a second that your own government would give you something that would kill you. And uh, they are, and they have been, and evidently they'll continue to. Well, they really love killing so kids. You people thinking of going in the military, you better think twice. Well, that's the issue here, is that it's all on record. And it's not just military, it's foster kids, it, it's, it's, it's regular you know, kids just getting shots. And again, you're right, you never think the government would do that, this type of betrayal, but it's not the government. It's the banker eugenics crime syndicate that now has reached critical mass and has gotten its people in almost all the major power positions. That's why it's so refreshing to have a Ron Paul in Congress or a Senator Paul or a Walter Jones. But maybe 50 or so, Ron Paul, I, I agree with his number, in, in, in the House are good. Ten good senators, Rand said, when I talked to him today, the, the, the interview's coming up. Uh, I mean, that's scary. 50 or so members of the House, 10 senators. All the rest are wanton scum. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Folks, I want to explain something. The guys Google everything I'm saying in there or start page it, they search it. They just showed all the SHAD documents on, on TV if you're watching. I'm not making this up. I can pull up AP, BBC, and it'll say, yes, in thousands of tests on ships, they sprayed chemical, biological, radiological. But then if you read deeper and then get into the Department of Energy and other documents, folks, they would kill people. The media tells you about people they sprayed that, you know, get tumors and die 10, 20 years later. In many cases, they, they go... All right, you guys show up. We're picking Johnson, Brown, uh, Horowitz, uh, you know, uh, Sanchez. This Saturday, your, your leave's canceled. You're to, because I've read the records. I've had some of the survivors on of some of the tests that weren't as lethal. And then they just march them in, nerve gas them, and they've got these special doctors who then package them. They always send everybody else off on leave. They kill them, and then they dissect their bodies, and then they tell their family they died of flu. I mean, I mean, the magnitude of this evil, but it's the globalist testing cadres of doctors that will march a young private in and murder them, murder them. I mean, this is who runs our government, Bob. Absolutely. And it's been gone for a long time. And, you know, I contend that the only way we're going to take this thing down other than through Congress, <clears throat> is it to have the, the, the financial system self-destruct. And when that happens, they lose their control. And that's the only way I can see getting to them.